Hey guys, Stefan here and welcome to my second part video on Juniper Fundamentals and today we're going to be covering a little bit more details around this control plane, the forwarding plane. Now we talked about the control plane being the brains of the operation and where it's maintaining the routing tables and the forwarding tables. Now the forwarding table that we see up on the, the top here is really what's known as the master forwarding table. It's the routing engine's job to maintain that master forwarding table and then push that down to the PFE or the packet forwarding engine. And down on the PFE, we see we have a local copy of the forwarding table. And the reason we want to push a local copy down here is so that when we have packets coming in and we want to send those packets through the system, we can make a local uh, forwarding table lookup. We can make a decision locally without having to send that traffic up to the routing engine to consult where the best path to that destination is. So by pushing a copy of the best routes, the most active routes, um, what we call our forwarding table into the packet forwarding engine. As packets come in, they can be uh, they can be consulted against this forwarding table and a local decision is made as to where to forward that traffic to. Now it's important to note that the packet forwarding engine also does a few other things. We can apply things on our interfaces such as stateless firewall filters. Uh, we can uh, apply policers. Uh, and we can also do things like um, class of service, for example. So if we want to uh, shape the traffic or uh, rate limit the traffic, or we want to filter the traffic through some type of a stateless firewall filter, those are all things that we apply on our interfaces and therefore they exist and happen in the packet forwarding engine uh, of our router. Now, moving on, we should talk about the two different types of traffic that you're gonna see traversing through a Juniper platform. Now, you have what's known as transit traffic, and we have what's known as exception traffic. Now, let's take a look at the first, which is transit traffic. Transit traffic is any traffic that is essentially traversing through the router. It's coming in on an interface, and it's going out an interface. So we got a pack comes in, we consult the local forwarding table, and we make a decision as to where it goes, and then we're gonna simply forward that traffic out the respective interface based on that routing that forwarding table lookup. Now, if it's multicast traffic, um, we might see that a packet comes in and it actually gets sent out multiple interfaces. So there's that kind of traffic as well, and that the packet forwarding engine is more than capable of handling both unicast as well as multicast traffic. So that's, that's transit traffic. Transit traffic will always traverse through the PFE. It will never go up to the routing engine. Uh, now, the other type of traffic that we might see on our routers is what's known as exception traffic. Now, exception traffic can be things like protocol updates. Uh, it could be things like ICMP where we need to generate uh, maybe some type of a, a response, an echo response, say it's a ping traffic coming through or a trace route or any of those types of things. Uh, or it could be any type of management traffic for which that traffic isn't traversing through the device, but it's actually destined to the device itself. And so when we see exception traffic, the packet forwarding engine is, is smart enough to see an exception packet coming in. It hits our local forwarding table and the packet forwarding engine is able to determine that that's traffic that needs to be handled locally. So it will send that traffic up to the routing engine. So again, this is gonna be things like routing protocol updates, BGP, OSPF, something that need, needs a, 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 an ICMP echo reply, trace route, management traffic, any of that type of stuff is gonna get sent through the PFE and then it's gonna get sent up to the routing engine so the routing engine can deal with that type of traffic. Um, now, you know, the last thing that we should cover is that this link right here that connects the forwarding table uh, between the routing engine and the packet forwarding engine is very, very important. In most platforms, this, this link is called FXP1. Um, and we want to make sure that an adversary or a bad actor um, wouldn't be able to necessarily starve the resources between uh, the control plane and the packet forwarding engine. Um, so there is some uh, rate limiters that are applied on this link right here uh, and some DDoS protections that prevent somebody from sending an influx of traffic that's destined towards the routing engine from, from unnecessarily starving the resources right here. 
Uh, and that's pretty much it. That sort of covers the routing engine, that covers the packet forwarding engine, covers transit traffic as well as exception traffic. Uh, and in our next couple of videos, I'll be getting into more advanced details into things like um, static routing versus uh, dynamic routing protocols. We'll get into things like routing preferences and some of the more uh, intermediate concepts inside Juniper. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe uh, you know, via the link below. And I hope you'll stick around to watch our next couple of videos coming out very soon. Thanks so much.